my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Today, being the 26th Sunday in the ordinary time, the Lord is going to give us a wonderful message. Dear brothers, our Lord is asking a simple direct question. How do you want to end the journey of your life? A simple question, but it needs a personal answer. Well, life is like a race which all of us are running. But in the race we see it's not the matter how we begin the race, but how we end the race. For example, uh, the Olympic runners, they struggle for four years, day in and day out. They make a lot of sacrifices. But what matters is who finishes first, will get the medal. With all of us, are making our life journey. What matters is how we have begun our journey, but how we'll end our journey. We all wish that we end our life on a positive note. But we see some people, great people, they have ended their life on a tragic note. But the, on the other side, we see some people who have lived a rather not so dignified way or a wicked way or a sinful way, but they have ended their life on a positive note. Well, today's gospel and the first reading give us this message. Let us go to the first reading today. A reading taken from the book of Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 26 to 28. Here, the Lord says, If an upright man leaves his right way and commits sin, he shall die. See, a good man, he had a very good past, but he has become very bad, wicked, and he dies. It is a tragic end. But if a sinful man turns away from his wicked ways, he will have a happy end. He will live. That's what the Lord is promising us today. Therefore, we see this thought flowing into today's gospel also. The gospel taken from St. Matthew chapter 21, 28 to 32. Here we see sayers and doers. Some say, uh, a husband telling his wife, Honey, I'm ready to do anything for you. What all sacrifices required, I'll do for you. But the same man can't go and bring a glass of water for the sick wife. Well, they make empty promises. Honey flows from their lips, but not from their heart. Therefore, we see such people in our life. And the gospel also gives us similar thing. The gospel, Jesus gives us a parable in which a, a father had two, a man had two sons. To the elder one, he says, my son, go to our vineyard and work. The son first says, no, I'm not going. But later, he changes his mind and out of love for his father, he goes to the field and he works. And the father asks the second son, my son, please go and work in our vineyard. The second son readily says, yes, father, I'm going. And afterwards, he doesn't go. The second son wants to please his father on his face, but actually he is not doing what, he, what his father is asking him to do. Well, the similar 
expression is there in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. The Lord is telling us, not all who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father will enter the kingdom of God. Here we see, who are these sayers and who are these doers? The Pharisees, the scribes, they are the sayers and not doers. Because they feel they are self-righteous people. They are just people, they are righteous people. They are acceptable by God. They think in themselves. They know the law by heart. But not the heart of the law. That is a tragedy. Because they know the law, but they never lived it. They followed the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law. That's why Jesus uh, openly rebuked them. You whitewashed tombs. Externally look so beautiful, glorious, splendid. But inside all filth. Filth is inside of you. My dear brothers and sisters, they performed rituals and sacrifices, but not what God wants them to do. They wanted to please God and please people by doing all kinds of prayers openly, fasting. They look so gloomy when they fast, and you know, all that is uh, denounced by Jesus in chapter 6 of Matthew. Well, now who are these doers? The so-called sinners, tax collectors. They lived a very bad life, but they repented for their sins. They changed their lives and they believed in Christ as their Messiah. Well, we see the life example of Zacchaeus in chapter 19 of St. Luke. Well, Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector. He had everything. He had name, fame, he had plenty of money, but he had no peace of mind because his own people, kith and kin, hated him. Hated him. He had no rest in his soul. He was looking for rest. Jesus saw him, encountered him, and gave him rest. And he goes to Zacchaeus' house. There in the presence of Jesus the light, the dark corner of Zacchaeus' life was enlightened. He could see the presence of Jesus and the eyes of Jesus become the search light in the dark corner of the life of Zacchaeus. And he comes to light. And conversion comes from within. Jesus he did not say a single word. You man, he lived a very wicked life. He robbed people in the name of collecting taxes. Or things like that. But he himself comes out of himself. And says, Lord, if I robbed anybody, if I uh, cheated anybody, I'm going to give four times. I'll give off of my property to the poor and four times for those whom I have wronged. What a change. What a change. If the second half of his life becomes a bright one, a positive note. Well, Jesus is the model of how to do the will of the Father. The second reading today tells us how Jesus became obedient to God the Father till death, death on the cross. As we read the second reading from the Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 to 11. Well, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, conversion is not anything that just happens. Conversion 
is a decision a strong decision that i make that i make a change in life but it may happen in a minute or it may take a lifetime but it happens it happens miraculously the thief crucified on the right side of jesus we see how his life changes the last minute the last minute of his life he becomes a changed person he repents for his sins and asks jesus lord remember me in your kingdom and he's saved my dear brothers it doesn't mean we can go on doing all kinds of wicked things evil things in life and the last minute i will change my dear brothers i tell you that last minute may not come to us it doesn't mean that we go on sinning waiting for the last minute then why do you wait for the last minute until you reach the death bed to change your life do it now or it may never happen the chance may never come in our life like the thief had so often times i believe in christ i received baptism therefore i am saved we do make confession god that is a sign of my conversion my dear brothers how sincere am i in making my confession which way am i approaching the confessional for god's mercy am i prepared enough do i truly believe in the mercy of god we have to answer ourselves well some people say a conversion is a one time job no not at all it is a lifelong process every minute we need to have this conversion from evil to good therefore we need to listen to the voice of conscience speaking silently in our heart the voice of the holy spirit now do i have the courage to change my life my dear brothers and sisters let us end our life on a positive tone let the second half of our life end on a positive tone receiving god's mercy the lord is waiting for us let us pray god our loving father you are so kind and merciful you forgave the sin of the thief on the right side of the cross lord we do need conversion every minute often times we are like pharisees lord we think that we are doing your will by saying prayers attending masses without our heart lord help us to do your will the doers of your will alone will receive heaven have mercy on us all and be with us amen thank you bye bye